A few days ago, a group of scientists, doctors, environmental organizers, and concerned citizens got together and they called for the urgent stop to the deployment of 5G. They mm. said that it's been proven harmful to human bodies, that this is an experiment on humanity, mm. and that this should be called a crime under international law. Five G is a weapon. It's used by the military. Do you know these five G millimeter wave technologies are used to scatter crowds? They drive up in this technology when they want to scatter a cloud, and they put out these frequencies in a much higher power than than five G will be initially uh, with us, but the same frequencies. And people scatter because they get the feeling their skin is on fire because the human body, including the skin, is an antenna. It interacts with frequencies and it receives and transmits information. At the cutting edge of understanding of DNA, scientists know that DNA is a receiver transmitter of information. I have to tell people five G story. It's bigger than the Holocaust. It's bigger than anything you've ever heard. I'm Mark Steele. Anybody who hasn't heard me, I'm a weapon systems head-up display expert, one of the leading experts in the world. I've actually brought cover in relation to this. And the reason I became an expert was because I invented 5G as a killer. Do not believe a single word I say. Not one. I want you to do your own research. You'll find it's absolutely terrifying. There are going to be boxes broadcasting 5G, this weapon, down every street all over the world. What we're concerned about 5G is that it's going to require a transmitter about every three to ten homes. So you're talking about a small cell tower placed in front of your home. Because these, at these high frequencies, you can't have... It doesn't travel very well. Yeah. Okay, and people need to understand, point. it's 24 gigahertz to 90 gigahertz. These wow. are not two feet. These are two inches to half an inch. And this is very dense wireless radiation hitting our bodies. What we know is that it pulses more. It's got higher frequency, more waves per second. It beats up the cells more. Let's talk about today's technology, what we okay. have going on today. Your phone is constantly sending electromagnetic fields in and out of each other. Whether or not you're receiving a notification right now, all of our digital tech sends this data back and forth, right, using these invisible microwave radiation signals. Uh -huh. That's today's tech. We have every cell tower, every router constantly pulsing with radiation, whether or not you're using it. Science shows that this causes DNA damage, cancer, among other things. But don't take my word that, for it. That, and that's just with 4G. That's that's just with today's technology. Before Correct. we get to 5G, right now you got some of it, but exactly. not that much. Wireless radiation has biological effects, period. And these effects are seen in all life forms, plants, animals, insects, microbes. In humans, we have clear evidence of cancer now. There is no question. We have evidence of DNA damage, cardiomyopathy, which is the precursor of congestive heart failure, neuropsychiatric effects, so 5G is not a conversation about whether or not these biological effects exist. They clearly do. 5G is a conversation about unsustainable healthcare expenditure. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Edge this weekend as a right-wing rally descends on the downtown area. USA! USA! Showing up to greet them, more than a thousand counter-protesters, including masked members of the local Antifa. Portland police say no major violent incidents took place. The bureau reported 13 arrests and several minor injuries, and the far-right groups left the city relatively fast. But as Portland sees a rising number of these public far-right gatherings, the city's mayor says authorities are grappling with a changing environment. We are now confronting the reality that in the United States we have a, wa a rising white nationalist movement based on white supremacy in this country, and it is impacting the entire nation but we're certainly seeing that play out here on the streets of Portland. Friends, the battle between good and evil for the soul of our culture is reaching a fevered pitch. When you live in a world of terrorists and madmen, when every bad thing that happens on every corner of the earth is in your living room by the end of the day, a world where your nearest neighbor is potentially a foreign enemy, rights begin to look like a vulnerability. And that power today is control. Surveillance technologies have outpaced democratic controls. One guy sitting in front of a monitor can track with precision an unimaginably large number of people.
Tá não, recuperando ali, olha, recuperando a imagem. Olha lá, de novo, olha lá. Alguma coisa incendiada, olha lá. Que faz a linha é, Niterói, Rio de Janeiro. Olha só, policiais cercando nesse momento esse ônibus da empresa que faz a ligação São Gonçalo, Rio de Janeiro, policiais militares e também policiais rodoviários federais nesse exato instante. Então aqui foi liberado agora há pouco e foi ao encontro de um policial rodoviário federal, saiu muito tensa, muito nervosa, saiu chorando, você acompanha aí nas imagens que nós fizemos agora há pouco, há menos de três minutos, aqui direto do Global Cop, ela foi caminhando lentamente. Viu agora há pouco, ó, essa imagem recuperada é a imagem do criminoso, tá aí ele, ó. Um rádio na mão, inclusive, ele saiu para... Apenas um policial, é, nesse momento, está escoltando. A gente não sabe se ele está ali para dar algum tipo de informação. Consegue ver aí na imagem um atirador de elite aqui do Batalhão de Operações Especiais. Ele está em cima de um caminhão do Corpo de Bombeiros. This morning, one of the world's most important natural treasures in flames. Over 9,500 fires have broken out since last week, threatening the most biologically diverse place on Earth and the long-term health of our planet. An area about half the size of the US, these forests produce 20% of the world's oxygen. The fires in the Amazon rainforest so huge they're even visible from space. Strong winds pushing the smoke hundreds of miles, plunging the Brazilian city of Sao Paulo into darkness. Tonight, new questions about whether the government is scooping up the personal cell phone data from thousands of innocent Americans. An investigation by the Wall Street Journal has uncovered a secret program designed to track down fugitives, suspected killers, rapists, and other criminals. It allows the U.S. Marshals to pinpoint the location of your phone from the sky without you knowing it's happening. Here's how it works. The Marshals launch a small plane carrying a device called a dirt box, which acts like a mini cell tower. Over a populated area, it picks up identifying pings from thousands of phones below until it finds its suspect, pinpointing that person's location within a three-yard radius, even in a specific room. When they put it on an airplane, they get information on tens or hundreds of thousands of people. And you know that's just an outrageous uh, uh, and unreasonable bulk search of, of innocent Americans' phone information. На этих кадрах турецкая колонна из 30 бронемашин и грузовиков с боеприпасами пересекает границу Сирии. Как заявили в Анкаре, она направлялась к одному из 12 наблюдательных пунктов Турции в провинции Идлиб для защиты и подкрепления. Речь о девятом наблюдательном пункте вооруженных сил Турции, который расположен близ города Хан-Шейхун. Турецкие наблюдатели дислоцированы в поселке Морик, в 10 километрах к югу от города. Этот район может оказаться в зоне боевых действий в связи с наступлением сирийских войск. Of a new humanitarian catastrophe in Syria's Idlib are growing as Russian and regime airstrikes continue to escalate. Hundreds of civilians, including women and children, have been killed in the offensive since April. The province is the last major stronghold of the opposition and is home to about 4 million people. This includes hundreds of thousands of people who have been displaced from their homes by regime and Russian forces. Now we get to this Bernie Sanders plan, $16 trillion on climate. It includes big research and development investments, really big. Um, climate change would be declared as a national emergency as part of the plan. Fracking just banned fossil fuel imports and exports as well. And it comes as three California cities are joining Berkeley, trying to ban natural gas.
Riots have swept through eastern Indonesia with protesters burning buildings, clashing with police and blocking roads. West Papua's legislative building and a prison were also torched. Now, West Papua and uh, Papua provinces are in Indonesia's east, far east, so to speak. They've been home to a long-running separatist movement against the Indonesian government. Now, Papuans say Indonesia illegally annexed the territory in the 1960s. Those tensions were evident last week, nearly 3,000 kilometers away in Surabaya in central Indonesia. Here, more than 40 Papuan students were allegedly racially abused as police detained them during Indonesia's Independence Day celebrations. This set the stage for the latest protests. Indonesian police and protesters clash near Sarong prison in West Papua. Officials say over 250 prisoners escaped on Monday when the jail was set ablaze. Protesters also damaged parts of the airport and set regional government offices on fire as they went on the rampage in the city. Violence too in the provincial capital Manokwari as rage spilled out onto the streets. Videos like this, circulated widely on the internet, have whipped up the protesters' anger. Activists say it shows Papuan students being called monkeys during an operation by security forces in East Java. The students were accused of damaging the Indonesian flag and taken into custody. Now to that breaking news overnight, four students injured in a shooting at a back-to-school block party on the steps of Atlanta University Center Library. The victims were all women ages 17 to 19. They got caught in the crossfire when a confrontation between two groups turned violent. The Four people are dead in the last 24 hours. The state has received 102 millimeters of rain, which is 1,000% more than normal. The highest rainfall that's been recorded since 2017. The Med Department has predicted heavy to very heavy rainfall at isolated places over Himash Pradesh.
We begin with the latest on the situation in Hong Kong, where protesters clash with the police during a rally on Wednesday. Wearing masks and helmets, the protesters gathered at the suburban Yuen Long MTR station. Some protesters also blocked the exits and roads leading to the station, even pointing laser pens at shield-bearing officers. An estimated 5,000 pilgrims, mostly Christian refugees from Iraq, flocked to the Basilica and National Shrine of Our Lady of Consolation in Cary, Ohio, to celebrate the Assumption of Mary. Ephraim is joined to idols. Let him alone. The idols of the heathen are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Neither is there any breath in their mouths. They that make them are like unto them. So is everyone that trusted them. There's a need for a new world order, but it has different characteristics in different parts of, of the world. The, the affirmative task we have now is, uh, is to actually um, uh, create uh, uh, a new world order because the global order is changing again. And the institutions and the rule worked so well in the post-World War II era for decades, uh, they need to be strengthened. The, the way we're gonna win over the long term is not just militarily, we've gotta win over uh, hearts and minds. And what that means is we've gotta invest in countries that uh, have no educational infrastructure and have no uh, means for young people to, to get ahead. We've gotta give them a stake in creating the kind of uh, a world order that I think all of us would like to see. For the first time in human history, it's both technologically and financially feasible for governments to track and store nearly complete records of our private lives. Now, this is not science fiction. Uh, this is happening now. When we look at the construction of facilities such as this, the NSA's data center in uh, Bluffdale, this was called by them, uh, the MDR, the Massive Data Repository. They called it that for a reason. This was not the targeted data repository. This was not something uh, that was designed just to watch this person or that person. It's because they were ingesting everything, everywhere, and saving it in case it might be of interest later, in case something came up. <laughs> 